Even when the equations are a little bit more involved, I still have these two concerns. What do I want to get rid of? How is it held there? In general, if something's being added or subtracted, that's the easiest thing to get rid of first. It's almost like order of operations in reverse. So I'm going to get rid of the 5. I'll use a negative 5. Put a negative 5 on the other side of the equal. Draw a line and bring down what's left. You have 2x. That's a 0. Don't bother to write it. Signs are different. Subtract. Keep the sign of the larger. Now you want to get rid of the 2. It's held by multiplication. Opposite operation is division. Divide each side by 2. 2 goes into 2 once. You end up with x equals 14 divided by 2 is 7. On this problem, I want A all by itself. I have a 1 being added or subtracted. I'll get rid of that first. So that's a negative 1. I'll put a positive 1. Other side of the equal sign, positive 1. Just draw a line and bring everything down. Um, I'll start here. 3A comes down. That's a 0. And here we have 15. I still want A by itself to get rid of the 3. I'll divide. 3 goes into 3 one time. So we have A equals 15 divided by 3 is 5. That's our solution. Finally over here, I want to get rid of this negative 5 and I want to get rid of the 13, but the easiest thing to do is get rid of something that's added or subtracted, so I'll get rid of this 13. It's a positive 13, so I'll put a negative 13 underneath. I'll come to the other side of the equal sign, negative 13. Then we simply draw a line. Bring everything down. That's a zero. Don't bother to write it. Bring down our negative 5y, the equal sign. And when we add these, we get the signs are the same, so we're adding a negative 40. Now I want to get rid of the negative 5. That way I'll have y by itself. It's held by multiplication. So I divide by negative 5. I come to the other side of the equal sign and I divide by negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is positive 1. So we have y all by itself. Bring down the equal sign. Negative 40 divided by negative 5 is positive 8. Here I'm trying to get m by itself, but I have an m on each side of the equal. So I need to either get rid of a negative 7m or get rid of a 4m. And by the way, I could start with any one of these four terms in solving this equation. I could get rid of 4m, I could get rid of a negative 6, I could get rid of a 93, or I could get rid of a negative 7m. But my greatest concern is with the variables, so I always start there. If I get rid of a negative 7m, I won't have to look at a negative for my variable, so I'll do that first. And notice, I want to get rid of the negative 7m, the entire thing. Up here, I only wanted to get rid of the 2. I was trying to leave the x where it was. That's why I only divided by a 2. Down here, I'm trying to get rid of the entire term, negative 7m. So I add 7m.
come to the other side of the equal, and since I have a like term, I put it underneath that. That's a zero, I don't have to write it. This is 11m. Bring down the negative six. Now I want to get rid of the negative six. So I'll put a positive six underneath. Come to the other side of the equal sign. Put a positive six. This leaves us with 11m. That's a zero. Signs are the same, we add. Now I want to get rid of the 11. It's held by multiplication. So divide by 11, divide by 11. 11 goes into 11 once. We have m. 99 divided by 11 is simply 9. So that's our solution. If you want to take the time to check this, you could take the 9, plug it in wherever there's an m, and you'll get a true statement. That always works for algebraic equations. Turning our attention to the last one. Again, my first step, I could get rid of a negative 8. I could get rid of positive 11n. I could get rid of a 6n. Or I could get rid of a negative 28. My concern is the variables. I'll start with them. If I get rid of a 6n, I won't have any negative variables to look at. If I get rid of a positive 11n, I would say minus 11n, minus 11n, and I would end up with a negative here. I'll still get the right answer, but it's more work. So we'll get rid of the 6n. It's a positive 6n. I'll put negative 6n underneath it put negative 6n under the like term on the other side of the equal sign. And let's see what we've got. Negative 8 drops down. Signs are different. We subtract, keep the sign of the larger. So it's a positive 5n. Bring down our equal sign. That's a 0. Don't have to write it. Because you have a negative 28 on this side of the equal sign. I can't leave air over here, but as long as I've got a value, that's fine. Now we'll just reassess where we stand. And by the way, one of the reasons I like to draw a line and bring things down is everything above this can be ignored at this point. I simply have to worry about what's here. I want to get rid of that negative 8, so I'll put a positive 8 and a positive 8. draw a line and bring everything down. That's a 0, 5n. I don't need a positive indicator. Uh, signs are different. We subtract, keep the sign of the larger. One more step to get n by itself. To get rid of 5, it's held by multiplication. The opposite is division. Divide by 5 over here as well. 5 goes into 5 one time. We have n, and that's negative 4. If you would like more practice with these concepts, I have two worksheets on my website with 15 problems each. I have practice sheet 1a and a practice sheet 1b. And of course, there's a detailed answer key for each one.